welcome back to the second part of this lecture on electric dipole radiation in the previous part this is where we had stopped uh, we had assumed an oscillating electric dipole and uh, using the retarded potentials we found out and uh, uh, subjecting them to three approximations which basically say that uh, we are considering the dipoles to be extreme dipole to be extremely small and we are looking at at distances which are very far away from the dipole in other words we are we are considering a perfect dipole approximation so using this we found out the potentials to be this the scalar potential to be this and the vector potential to be this so now we can find out the field in this way electric field is negative gradient of phi minus dou a by dou t and b is equal to curl of a so this is what we will now evaluate one by one so first we'll find out the electric field so to find out the electric field we need the gradient of phi okay so we need the electric field so first we'll find out this first term that is the gradient of phi so phi is this so we need to find out what is the gradient now of course we have to uh, find out the gradient in uh, spherical polar coordinates because uh, phi is a function of r and theta so it's easier to evaluate the gradient in spherical polar coordinates so gradient of phi is basically this in spherical polar coordinates so then uh, when we differentiate this okay so dif this differenti differentiate this this is phi differentiate this with respect to r and when you do that we have to basically use okay p not omega by 4 pi epsilon not c p not omega by 4 pi epsilon not c i can take it uh, outside then cos theta into 1 by r sin omega t minus r by c that will get differentiated with respect to r that will be we have to use the product rule so first you differentiate 1 by r that is going to give us 1 by minus 1 by r square sin omega t minus r by c then you differentiate sin omega t minus r by c with respect to r so that is going to give us uh, cos omega by c into uh, sorry omega by c into cos of omega t minus r by c and uh, because of this minus sign we have this so minus omega by r c into cos omega t minus r by c so that is your r cap next we have uh, the differentiation of this with respect to theta we have only one term here there's cos theta differentiation of cos is minus sign here so we'll get minus sign theta and uh, there is a r already here so all and outside we have 1 by r so that will give us 1 by r square so this is what we have so we have a theta cap term in this case now uh, we have three terms two of these terms they vary as 1 by r square and the la one term it varies as 1 by r so we can directly apply the uh, third approximation and we can just neglect what is 1 by r square term okay so we neglect this term and we neglect this term and we'll keep only this term okay so that is going to be gradient of phi okay so call this equation number 12 next so once we have obtained the gradient phi next thing that we need to do is we need to find out the time rate of change of a okay so a is basically this so this is a now you differentiate this a with respect to t so that means basically you are differentiating this right we using chain rule so differentiation of sine is cos and uh, differentiate the inner function so omega one extra omega will come here so mu naught p naught omega square by 4 pi r into cos of omega t minus r by c and of course one more thing is this k cap this is in cartesian coordinates this is a unit vector in cartesian coordinates so we have to translate this into spherical polar coordinates so k cap is basically cos theta r cap minus sine theta theta cap so this is do a by do t and we have already found out gradient of phi so all we need to do is just substitute here so e is going to be equal to uh, gradient phi this is gradient phi okay this is gradient phi and uh, do a by do t is basically this quantity and both of them with minus signs we just uh, sum them together so that is going to be the electric field so now uh, what we will do is we will take the common terms outside okay we will take the constants outside so we have uh, now here if you notice in the first term we have p naught omega square by 4 pi epsilon naught into c square 1 by epsilon naught into c square is nothing but mu naught right because uh, c square is equal to 1 by mu naught epsilon naught right basic uh, relationship so 1 by epsilon naught c square is equal to mu naught so I can take this 1 by epsilon naught c square i could write as a mu naught here so mu naught p naught omega square by 4 pi i take it outside okay here also mu naught p naught omega square by 4 pi i take it outside so what is left behind is okay minus this minus comes okay this same minus here cos theta by 
r because i have taken only 4 pi i have not taken r outside so cos theta by r cos omega t minus r by c into r cap and here mu not p not omega square by 4 pi i have taken common so we will have a cos theta by r over here into r cap and then we have a sin theta by r into theta cap so this is what we will get so now uh, we can see here that these two are same right this term and this term so this there's a minus here and there's a plus here so these two will get cancelled out so only this term is going to remain so as a result the electric field will be equal to minus mu naught p naught omega square by 4 pi into sine theta by r into cos of omega t minus r by c into theta cap right so it varies as 1 by r so so far so good next the magnetic field for magnetic field we need to find out the curl of a a is equal to minus mu naught p naught omega by 4 pi r sine of omega t minus r by c into cos theta r cap minus sine theta theta cap now we need to find out curl of a now curl it will have three terms right so we have a phi cap this is the azimuthal term then we have a radial term and we'll have a polar term but if you uh, go back to the curl of uh, uh, any vector in spherical polar coordinates the radial uh, term the radial term will have inside will have either it will have derivative of phi or it will have uh, differentiation of the uh, azimuthal component both of which will be zero similarly the polar term it will have derivative of uh, phi that is azimuthal angle or it will have differentiation of uh, sorry differentiation with respect to phi or it will have a derivative of the azimuthal component of a in both case it will be zero so only the azimuthal component of curl of a will be there so 1 by r do by do r r a theta minus do a r by do theta what is a theta a theta is a theta cap component so basically what is a theta a theta is this entire thing okay this entire thing multiplied with minus sin theta that is your a theta and a r is this entire thing multiplied by cos theta that is a r okay so next uh, we can just straightforward differentiation i'll leave it to you so uh, what you do is this entire thing into sin theta okay uh, you uh, differentiate you multiply with r moment you multiply with r this r in the denominator will get cancelled out then you differentiate with respect to r okay so basically we'll be using the uh, we, we'll be we'll be getting these two terms okay uh, i think yeah so we'll be getting this term okay then uh, we uh, differentiate we take this term into cos theta so that is your ar that you differentiate with respect to theta so we'll get a sine theta term here so we'll get this term okay so i leave it to you to verify uh, this whether this quantity gives this and this gives us this okay so we have this so i can take this uh, this uh, r 1 by r i take it inside okay so mu naught p naught omega by 4 pi is what is common omega by c sine theta by r into cos of omega t minus r by c plus sine theta by okay when i take this r inside we'll get a sine theta by r square into sine omega t minus r by c into phi cap now again we can directly apply the third approximation and we see that the first term it varies as 1 by r and the second term it varies as 1 by r square so you can straight away we can neglect this second term and as a result we'll have curl of a to be equal to this which gives us the magnetic same which is nothing but the magnetic field so magnetic field is basically this it varies as phi cap so we have electric field being this and magnetic field being this next we can find out the pointing vector because we are interested in the electric dipole radiation so for that we need the pointing vector pointing vector is 1 by mu naught e cross b so we have to take the cross product of these two now you can see here what's the difference in the magnitudes the only thing is here there is an extra 1 by c otherwise everything is same right so mu naught p naught omega square by 4 pi mu naught p naught omega square by 4 pi sine theta by r sine theta by r cos of omega t minus r by c cos of omega t minus r by c and here there is theta cap there is phi cap here so everything is common except this 1 by c term here okay so when i take the cross product of this one i can just take this common things i could just take it as squares right so this is what we'll get so one by mu naught from here one by mu naught from here and then mu naught p naught omega square by four pi mu naught p naught omega square by four pi whole square because that will come from both of these electric and magnetic field whole square then one by c from the magnetic field we'll get a one by c then sine theta by r sine theta by r you'll get sine theta by r whole square 
cos omega t minus r by c and same thing here that will give us cos square omega t minus r by c and we'll have theta cap cross phi cap okay theta cap cross phi cap is nothing but r cap okay so we have uh, this uh, mu naught i think this uh, I think uh, we can take this uh, there is a mu naught square here because there is a mu naught square and there is one by mu naught already outside here so that will cancel out one of this mu naught so we'll have a mu naught and there is a c so we'll take this mu naught by c outside and what is left behind is p naught omega square by 4 pi sine theta by r okay because we are taking the whole thing so we are taking the whole thing square outside sine theta by r cos of omega t minus r by c whole thing square into r cap so because theta cap minus phi cap is r cap so this is basically the pointings vector so what it basically tells us is that the pointings vector is along the radial direction which is what we expect because radial direction is the direction which is in the outward direction right so it means uh, from the dipole it will be always the pointing vectors will be radially outward that means the electromagnetic energy will be always carried in the outward direction okay so this result is what we actually expect from here so we have the pointings vector as this intensity is basically the time average of the magnitude of the pointing vector over a complete cycle so intensity is the time average this angle bracket means time average of the magnitude of the pointing vector over a complete cycle so i'll take all the constants here mu naught p naught square omega to the power 4 okay sine square theta divided by 4 square is 16 pi square c r square then what this is the only thing that is time dependent okay cos of omega t minus r by c that is the only thing that is time dependent so we have to take the time average of this okay so time average of sine square or cos square function is always equal to 1 by 2 over a complete cycle it will always be equal to half so cos square of a uh, time average of cos square this uh, function will be equal to half so 1 by 2 an extra fa factor of 1 by 2 will come in that 1 by 2 into 16 will give us a 32 pi square c in the denominator so this is basically the intensity okay so now the total power which is radiated over a sphere of radius r is very simple p rad is basically the uh, surface uh, integral of this so this on the entire constant we'll take it outside then we'll have the integral of sine square theta by r square and uh, the area element in spherical polar coordinates the area element is r square sine theta d theta d phi right this is the area element okay so when we integrate this so this r square will get cancelled r square r square will get cancelled so we'll have a sine square theta and another sine theta is there so we'll have a sine cube theta and when you integrate over theta and phi theta will go from 0 to pi and phi will go from 0 to 2 pi and when you integrate this this is what you will get so this is basically the power radiated over a sphere and this is the intensity now you can see the intensity it varies as a uh, sine square theta right so can, i have actually made uh, a python simulation here so this is basically a python code i can share it with you if you're interested so if you run this okay basically i want to see how this intensity profile looks like this plot is also also there in uh, griffiths i have just tried to replicate this uh, plot the surface plot from griffiths so when you run this this is what you get this is the intensity profile okay it will be donut shaped basically it will be donut shaped if you take a cross section of this you will get something like this so how to read that is basically this okay uh, it's much easier i have done this in the slides so let me go back to my slides okay so the intensity profile intensity is this it varies as sine square by r square so it this is going to be the donut shape the very same uh, plot that uh, the surface plot that i have shown here and this is the cross section okay so let's say this is the dipole the dipole is oscillating like this along the uh, equatorial direction that is in the direction perpendicular to the oscillation of the dipole the intensity will be maximum and along the axis of the dipole the intensity will be minimum okay so maximum intensity will be along the equatorial direction equatorial direction means this direction which is pi by 2 so theta is equal to pi by 2 so sine theta sine pi by 2 is 1 so this is going to be 1 so the i max will be simply equal to mu naught p square p naught square omega to the power 4 this is 1 divided by 32 pi square c r square so this is going to be the intensity minimum intensity will be along the 
uh, radial direction okay minimum intensity will be along the radial direction along the radial direction means either theta is 0 or theta is equal to pi theta equal to 0 or pi sin theta sin 0 is 0 sin pi is also 0 so sin theta will be 0 so this will be 0 the intensity will be 0 so we will not have any intensity coming so that's why we have this shape like this so if you're looking at the dipole from here the dipole is oscillating like this if you're looking at the dipole like this no intensity of light will reach you but if you're looking at the dipole from here okay you'll get the maximum intensity okay so that basically is your electric dipole radiation so uh, this brings me to the end of this lecture on electric dipole radiation you could uh, go through uh, this uh, particular chapter in Griffiths and in case you have any queries please feel free to get in touch with me so with this we come to the end of this lecture thank you